Welcome back. Today, we're going to talk about the process of constructing a confidence interval for P. When we go to construct a confidence interval for P, which is a proportion, what we need to do first is we need, we're going to have to check some conditions before we can construct this interval. I like to think about it like this. Before you can construct, you've got to pull your permits. You've got, you have to check that the conditions are right to start your construction. And so think of this process of checking out the conditions, like pulling the permits when you're doing a construction job. So the first thing that we need to check to see is that it's random. We're looking for things like quotes, random sample, right? It's gonna say a random sample was taken. We also wanna check our 10% condition, meaning that is our sample size less than 1 10th of our population. That's going to allow us to use our standard deviation formula. That's going to allow us to make sure that our sample proportion doesn't take on a different identity than the population proportion. Because if the sample gets too big, then it's going to have its own identity. And number three, we want to check that it's normal. And that should be something that you recognize from other processes that we've done in, this, uh, in these units. And what we're gonna do for P, for proportions, is we're gonna check our large counts. Meaning, is our sample size times our sample proportion greater than or equal to 10? And is our sample size times one minus our sample proportion greater than or equal to 10? Another way to think of that would be, is our number of failures and our number of successes both greater than 10? Once those are true, so what we need to have is we need to have, yes, this is true, yes, this is true, yes, true, yes, true. So it's three conditions, but there's four parts to it because you've got to check both the things for large counts. So once those two things are true, sorry, once those three things are true, then we move into the actual construction. Well, what we need for the construction is if the conditions are the permits, then the critical values... then the critical values are the components. They're the, you know, the steel beams, the girders, all that kind of stuff that's going to allow us to actually make our interval work and make it, make it happen. I want to sidestep a little bit. So critical value uh, is going to be known as a Z star. Uh, these are our Z star values. And Z star values is not Z times, they're Z star values. And Z star values come from the a portion of area under a curve. And so how is this all related? Well, I want you to think for just a second about our normal curve here. The area underneath is equal to one. When we construct a 95% confidence interval, what we're saying is that in the middle here is 95% of our data. And what's left over is 0 0.05. And so we have 0 0.05 because the normal curve is symmetrical. We actually have 0 0.025 left for each of the tails. And these tail percentages are going to give us where our critical values come from. There's a couple of ways to do this. So uh, to find critical values, I'm going to uh, step down here for a minute. So to find, so leave a space to find z star, which are the critical values. Um, and that's going to be for any percent. So you can have a 68% confidence interval, you can have a 72% confidence interval. We're either going to use uh, the calculator function inverse norm of our tail percent. Or another way to think about that would be inverse norm of one minus our confidence percent. So in our case up here, it was one minus that 0.95 and divide by two. So that's one way to do it. The other way would be to go to our table A, find the tail percent on the big chart or as close as you can get to it and work backwards to find a z-score. So really, honestly, guys, this is the easiest way. Uh, it's the most accurate way. You're gonna get a much more accurate answer. So when that happens, 
and you use that inverse norm, there's several values that come up really, really commonly when we talk about critical values. We're gonna have a 90% confidence interval, we're gonna have a 95% confidence interval, and we're gonna have a 99% confidence interval. And it's best to memorize these and have these ready to go. Like I said, you can always use this to find those tail percents, sorry, to find those Z star values, but it's really advantageous to have these kind of at the ready when we're doing these confidence intervals. So the Z star for 90% is equal to 1.645. And this comes from putting in our tail percent. So for the tail percent here, we would do, you know, one minus 0.9, which is equal to 0.1. And we divide that by two. So you'd have like inverse norm of 0.05. Okay. And that would be equal to 1.645. That's where that comes from. I'm just kind of giving you the the breakdown of it. A 95% confidence interval, which is this up here, right? So we do like uh, inverse norm of 0 0.025, and that would give us our Z star value of 1.960. And our 99% confidence interval, we'd have 0 0.01 divided by two, so we have 0 0.005 in our inverse norm. We'd have a Z star value of 2.57. Six. Okay, so those are the basic Z star values that we'll use quite commonly. You're going to notice a lot of times 0.95 or 95% confidence interval comes up. So there's our, our basics, right? So those are our things that we're going to start to do our construction with. We have to have that. Well, how do we take that and make it into a confidence interval? Because that's not the whole thing. Uh, the formula for confidence interval is actually on your formula sheet for AP statistics. The problem is it doesn't actually explicitly lay it out. It kind of says, uh, it says something like this. It says you have your point estimate plus or minus your margin of error. Okay. Uh, and so that really doesn't give you the whole thing because you have to still have your values here. And so what you'll need to write down is you'll need, you, it's, it's helpful to write your formula. So in our case, our point estimate is going to come from our P hat. That is our sample proportion that we found when we actually did our little experiment or not experiment, but our, our little sample. So this is our sample proportion. Okay. And then we're going to do plus or minus, and that's where our Z star value comes in. So we have our Z star, and we're going to multiply that times our standard deviation formula, which is P hat and one minus, one minus P hat over N. And there's some labels for these pieces, right? So this is our critical value. And this part right here is standard deviation, but when we're putting it into the confidence interval formula, we're actually going to call it our standard error or SE sub P hat. Okay, so that's our standard error SE sub P hat. So that's how our point estimate comes together. And you'll notice when I have this plus or minus, what this is going to give me is it's going to give me two values here, right? And those two values are going to become our uh, value, comma, value. And that's going to be our interval. Okay, so uh, just to review here for a second, we have to take our, start with our conditions. We have to find, is it random? Uh, is it meeting the 10% condition? Is it normal based on large counts? Because we're dealing with a proportion. That's our permits to do our construction, right? So we have to have those before we can do our construction. So then we find our critical value. A lot of times you're gonna have a prompt that says, use one of these. And my suggestion was to memorize these or to have them very much at the ready. But if they give you something wacky, you can always use inverse norm of the tail percent. Or if you forget, you can always draw your picture like I did up here and say, okay, what's in the middle? That's our confidence interval. And then our tail portions give us what we're going to put into our inverse norm function uh, to spit out these critical values here. Then after we have that Z star value ironed up, ironed out, we take the formula for confidence interval, which is our point estimate, our sample proportion, plus or minus our margin of error. And our formula for this, that would be P hat plus or minus our Z star critical value times our standard error. And that's going to spit out 
when we subtract, it's going to spit out a low value. When we add, it's going to spit out a high value, and that gives us our confidence interval. Okay, so what do we do with that? Let's actually look at a prompt. A good way to do this would be to try to pause here, try this particular example, and then come back and watch me do the explanation. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and keep rolling through it. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind. All right, here we go. What do you want to be when you grow up? According to a nationwide survey of a random sample of 1,000 kids under the age of 12, some kids want to be a ninja, a dragon keeper, a dancing unicorn, and even an octopus. 55 to the 1,000 want to be a doctor. We would like to use this study to find a 98% confidence interval uh, for the true proportion of kids who want to be a doctor. So what are we doing here? A, identify the parameter of interest. What are we measuring? We are trying. What are we trying to find by setting up this confidence interval, right? Because remember, our confidence interval is just an interval in which we believe, or with a certain amount of confidence, believe that the true mean or proportion is in there. So the parameter of interest would be P is the true proportion of kids who want to be a doctor. So that's what we're measuring. Now we need to check the conditions. So we'll need to check, is it random? Is it meeting the 10% condition? And is it uh, normal? So we were, we're dealing with a proportion. So we need to look back and find, is it random? Well, let's see, 55, uh, let's see. Oh, nationwide survey of a random sample. So here's what we put for random. Random sample. We don't have to cite any sort of procedural randomness because they told us that it's random, so that's sufficient. So we can go ahead and put a check mark by that. 10% condition. How many students did we sample? How many children did we sample? Well, we looked at 1,000. Is 1,000 less than um, one-tenth of all children? The answer to that is, yes, it is. So that's good to go. Normal, we wanna check our large counts. Let me get my colors straightened out here. So large counts. We wanna check two things. We wanna check that our sample size times our proportion is less than or equal to, sorry, greater than or equal to, <laughs> greater than or equal to 10. And we want to check that our sample size times 1 minus our proportion is also greater than or equal to 10. Is 1,000 times 0.55 greater than or equal to 10? The answer is yes, because it's 55. Um, point zero, sorry, 0 0.055. Because our p hat in this case is 55 of 1,000, which is equal to 0 0.055. Uh, that's greater than or equal to 10 because it's equal to 55. So then surely 1,000 times 0 0.945, which is equal to 945, uh, that's greater than or equal to 10 also. So those are both getting our check marks here. So just like that construction, we have four check marks. So we have con confirmed our conditions. We can now begin our construction. It's asking us to find the critical value for a 98% confidence interval. While I look up here, I notice that I do not have 99, 98 on here. I have 99, but not 98. So we're going to have to do a little bit of figuring here. Commonly on the AP test, I'll give you one of these. It's going to kind of push you to sort of have to f find one that's not one of your normal quote, in quotes, not normal like normal curve, but normal values. I want to draw a picture here to kind of show you where this comes from. Well, if we've got 0.98 in the middle... 1 minus 0.98 would be equal to 0 0.02. And so our tail percent, because there are one, two pieces there of the tail, is going to be 0 0.01. And so our critical value is going to be equal to the inverse norm of 0 0.01, which is equal to 2.33 when I plug that into my calculator. That is not the answer to this question because they want us to calculate the interval. So that's part of the answer. The other answer is the interval. Here's what I need to write for full credit. 
I'm going to say that I have a point estimate plus or minus a margin of error. I'm going to explicitly lay out my formula, p hat plus or minus z star. And this is as much for credit as it is for me to make sure that I have all the pieces of my formula. z star times my standard deviation formula. 1 minus p hat over n. And then I plug in my values. My point estimate is that 0 0.55 or 0 0.055 plus or minus my critical value, which is 2.33. Standard deviation formula would be 0 0.055 times 0.945 over 1,000, which is my sample size. When I do the mathematics on that, I've got a plus and a minus. I end up with two answers. My two answers are 0 0.038 and 0 0.072. So this is my confidence interval right here. Ooh, bad choice on the... Okay, that's my confidence interval here. So what are we doing with that? What does, it, what does it mean to have a confidence interval? Well, we believe with a certain level of certainty that the true proportion of students that would want to be a doctor is somewhere in that interval. And so interpreting it in context is relaying that those facts there, talking about how confident are we and what does the interval actually mean. So let's interpret. We are 98% confident that the true proportion of students, sorry, children want to be a doctor is captured by the interval from 0 0.038 to 0 0.072. So we're 98% confident that 0 0.038 to 0 0.072 captures the true proportion of children that want to be a doctor. So what do we do here? Let's just review. We talked about our conditions and how we have to have them in order to construct our confidence interval. But in the meantime, we have to find our critical value. We have a set of critical values here that are very, very common, but we can always find our critical value by taking the amount of the confidence level, subtracting that from one, divided by two to get a tail percent. From there, we use point estimate plus or minus margin of error to come up with the two values that form our confidence interval. The formula for doing so is to take our point estimate, which comes from what sample we did, and plus or minus our critical value that we found over here times the standard deviation, which in the scope of this particular formula is called standard error, and we get our two values that get spit out because we have a plus or minus situation. What we did down here was we identified the parameter of interest. So it was to measure the true proportion of kids who want to be a doctor. Checked our conditions, laid out our formula using point estimate plus or minus margin of error. We had p hat from our prompt. We found z star by calculating using inverse norm. We used our standard deviation or in this case standard error formula using our sample proportion to determine our interval. Then we interpreted the interval in context by saying we are 98% confident that the true proportion of kids who want to be a doctor is captured by this interval that we just constructed, okay? So that's the basics of constructing an interval.